Hello friends, I have just finished this collection right now. Uh, I still have the work hands, I wash them but <laughs> some stuff doesn't come off. And I just finished with this one here, which is one of the first ones I started, I think, if not the first. But I still didn't know where I was gonna go with it, so I left it till the end. Um, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, so I just finished this bunch which I think are 11 of them and I wanted to talk about them a little bit now that it's still fresh in my mind. Um, one of the things you have to learn a bit as an artist is to learn to to just decide when things are finished, that's very difficult. And also to once it's finished to let it go. Um, it's a bit hard in the beginning when you start feeling you're getting somewhere to let them go, to find a new home, to just go out into the world, you cannot just, you really, really kind of keep everything you do or even a good portion of what you do because it, I find that it limits you, it anchors you, like, you know, <laughs> to a place to where you were when you were doing that. So they have to just go away and they have to go away from my mind. Uh, everything you make, like everything you make, everything you do, everything that happens to you, everyone you meet, that, that makes you and it makes the things you make, it affects the things you make. So they will always in a way be with me, but in a very different way than right now, right here in front of me, especially when you see them all here together. Um, well, it's it, this is a lot of work that's taken months of work. Well, not straight <laughs> months, but because I have other things that I do, but a lot of hours are here. And a lot of myself, I guess. So it's a process to to let go of it. And it's something you have to learn. And there is... It's hard in the beginning. But it's very, very important. Uh, it's something you have to learn to... I don't know if the word is like, but... To process it in a positive way. Okay. Let me uh, get on with it. So I'm gonna be telling you, well, they are all basically called mistletoe and then a number. Um, I work a lot with collections because I like to develop an idea and a color scheme and a feeling. Um, so I like to work this way. I create, first I create uh, sketches. I can show you. Where's my book? So that's from last year's collection and then I create very very rough sketches. I take my, my notebook with me and some watercolors in, in my bag and I start creating rough or more or less rough sketches. And then sometimes I also create um, more detailed sketches to define uh, how things will come together. Like for example, this is this one. And things often change a little bit from a sketch or the initial choice of stones that are chosen for them. Which is kind of funny because I'm an enamelist. I create these painted glass little tiny paintings. But I'm very inspired by, by the stones themselves. So I, I buy the stones always first. I source them from different places. And like I like stones that have interest in them. I don't really go for very pure transparent stones but I like inclusions and interesting details and contrast in them and I let them inspire me mostly in in my color schemes because I think the colors in nature are are really rich and the combinations you find in nature are really inspiring so I like to use that a bit as a starting point I have just boxes with stones and I keep them around when I when I make my color sketches and and then I kind of set them aside a little bit and I may change my mind a little bit like for example this piece originally I had set two green stones and one of these uh, ring links but it ended up quite different and a lot more elaborate than that 
and I added red to it. So it's a bit of a dance <laughs> back and forth where it may take me um, as, as the piece is actually taking form it may become a bit more elaborate or sometimes less sometimes it can become it needs to be simpler so yeah many of these are here in my sketchbook and then the next part of the process is creating the little paintings uh, I actually end up spending a lot more time creating the, the settings, the frames, the necklaces, selecting the stones and making all of that than the making the actual paintings. That's in part because I have a lot more experience as an enamelist. I've been doing this for 25 years. And at some point I decided that I needed to be able to do... I, I had this vision in my mind how this needed to be and I... I could have tried to outsource it to a jeweler, to a goldsmith, but I wanted to do it myself. Uh, so I put a lot of time into getting to the point where I was happy with that. And it's still, of course, they, they are all handmade entirely. Uh, I have very little elements that are pre-made because I have a very concrete idea in my mind, as you saw in the sketches. So I have to make them from scratch and that takes a long time <laughs> to make. But that's how it has to be. So yeah, uh, I start with the enamel, which is it's glass basically. So it's a type of glass that you apply it on top of metal. So some of these are made on copper, others are made on silver. I will show you some more detail later. And the theme for this collection, which is a collection I, it's well so far recurring. I am coming back to it. In spring when when spring starts but of course then it takes me a while to <laughs> to get them done so it's almost summer now but it, they were made in spring as the leaves were coming out I'm really inspired by this very very fresh yellow green colors of foliage um, so all of them have this theme in which I there is some mistletoe I know a lot of people associate mistletoe with with Christmas, but I don't because it's not in our culture. For me, the mistletoe, you can see the, these little balls of mistletoe on the trees throughout the winter when the trees are bare. And then in spring, you start, the foliage starts to come out and everything starts to change and they start to become more hidden in the foliage. And that's a bit what I'm going at. Uh, the sparkles of the sun coming through these new leaves, which in the beginning is almost golden, and how they they start making, they start giving de depth to the landscape. So in winter you have bare branches basically, and it looks kind of flat, and I love that too. <laughs> I I have this winter collection that I call Mist, and Mist makes everything be become closed and schematic and muffled, but in spring it's the opposite. It's like layers start to appear and depth and you can go from the very close up of leaves that are coming out to a whole atmosphere that you see in the distance. So this is a little bit where I'm going from with this. That's also why you find like root like uh, design elements and little leaves and like little bubbles and sparkles and like pollen floating in the air. So things starting to come alive. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's a bit my inspiration. And I will show you maybe a little bit uh, the process of creating enamel if you've never heard of it. It's a, it's a technique, uh, an art form that's really thousands of years old. Um, it's basically painting with glass on metal. So it's often associated with jewelry, um, but not only you also find paintings and, and panels created with it. So it's fire and it in, in a kiln in many layers and you build up. This technique is called painting on enamel so I first build up layers of enamel although I already start creating the gradations of greens and then all the details are painted with super tiny brushes and fired again. So this is totally light 
resistant, it's made out of glass, it doesn't ever fade. So we still have stuff, enamel stuff in the museums and it looks like the first day it was made thousands of years ago sometimes. So yeah, that's what I do. And then I like to to have these complementary stones. So when I'm, I'm going to show you each of them and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the stones I used. Uh, it's still all fresh in my mind, which <laughs> which is good to do now. Uh, so I will tell you what everything is. And I like to have this record of them for my memory too. Okay, so I'm not going to follow any particular order to show them to you. I'm just going to take them out of the case and, and just tell you which is which. They all have a number. Um, I work... I just write the numbers as I'm making the enamels, but then the process may get a bit scrambled and they are not finished in this order. And some of them will be missing from the sequence because they didn't make it to this stage. They may make it to next iteration of this collection or not. Uh, so we will see. But this is what we have now. So this one is a little brush. It's, uh, it's pretty dainty for my... <laughs> I tend to work larger pieces. You can think of them as paintings, so they are very tiny paintings, but as uh, jewelry goes, I guess it's on the large side. And this one is a brooch. Um, it has a stainless steel uh, pin. I like to use spring steel because it stays springy forever, basically. It doesn't get soft or snapped or anything. And that's how I make all my pins. The rest is all silver, uh, except the enamel is created on copper. And this one has a little bit of opalescent enamel, which is something very difficult to, to show on video or picture. Video is better, but there is a changeable aspect to it. So it looks a bit misty. Um, the stone here is a uh, tourmaline. Uh, Kind of olive green tourmaline which has a little bit of sparkle to it so that's mistletoe 25 these are a pair of earrings um mistletoe 21 and the stones are serpentine I'm not sure that I pronounced the, the stone names correctly. English is not my first uh, tongue, if you have noticed, or my second. So these are semi-translucent green stones, and I line them with 24 karat gold. So underneath the stone there is gold, and this warms them up a little bit, which I think it gives a nice depth and goes with the, the shades I use in this collection. So these are dangly earrings. I like dangly earrings because I find the movement is really beautiful and they have an English lock which is a type of closure that clicks and you can hear it. So they have a couple of notches there that you can use depending on your earlobes and it's very secure, it doesn't come off. And they are super comfortable. This is my favorite closure for earrings. But yeah, it's a bit more uh, work intensive than other types of earrings. This one is also a brooch. Uh, it's mistletoe 23. So it's a brooch, but you can also use it as a pendant because it has some loops for a chain. So you can also hang it from there for a chain or a ribbon or whatever. And this one is quite different from the others because I, I zoomed out a little bit from the scene. Normally you see branches and the greenery and the leaves, but here you're seeing really a group of trees. And the style is also a little bit different. I wanted to, to make something a bit more illustrative, like children's books type of illustration, which I love too. So, so that one is a bit special. 
it's all also silver with a steel pin. This one I'm I'm pretty fond of. Um, it's obviously designed with this stone in mind. This is a Vesuvianite. Vesuvianite. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. It, I think it's also called Idocrase. Um, it's a stone that was first found around Mount Vesuvius in Italy, so that's why it's called that way. And these little ones here also are the same type of stone, and they are microfaceted, just a little sparkles there. So I took this uh, equilateral triangle, equally sided triangle, and I elongated it to make the dangle part. And here is the enamel, which this one is enameled on silver, fine silver, that's pure silver. We don't use pure silver for jewels, mostly because it's a bit too soft. But we add a little bit of copper to give it a bit more toughness, so that's sterling silver. But the enamel is created on fine silver because you get brighter colors. And that's mistletoe 19. With a sterling chain also. So here is another pair of earrings. These are also tangles, and they are more traditional stud earrings, but um, I'm not a fan of stud earrings because I find they are not very secure. I don't like the knots. The typical knots, they kind of wiggle themselves out because they have two prongs. So you may be familiar with that. That's a, a two prong, a regular uh, knot which is created industrially. These are stamped or created with some sort of jig, semi-industrially uh, semi manu manufactured. A lot of things we we think of as made by machines are often have some manual labor involved. But you can just buy those. And then this happens, I find, often. And then they become less secure because this kind of snaps there. It has a little channel. And when it snaps out of there, it's very easy that it comes out, so I'm, I'm not a fan of them. But what I did here is I created my own knots, so these are entirely handmade, and I created them with three prongs. And like a tripod, uh, three prongs are very secure. It's not possible for the, for the post to come out of there, because it's held in three points. So that's really very secure. I also think they look beautiful. <laughs> so they also... Uh, snap in a channel and that doesn't go anywhere. So the stones, they are kyanite, I believe you call them. It's a very sparkly, beautiful green stone, although it comes in many colors. You can find it blue, orange, um, and this is a bit of mossy uh, kyanites. And I, I love them because they're so sparkly and they have a lot of interest in them. So these are mistletoe 24. It's uh, engraved here on the sides. The enamel is created on copper. Now this one, uh, it started its life as a brooch. So it's a brooch that's a bit different because like most brooches you you find the mechanism at the back, but then it it uh, attaches on the front, so it becomes a bit more of a design element. Um, and then I thought, since it has this uh, little handle here, I can also make a little chain with a couple of loops. So you can hook in there and then you can also wear it as a necklace. So it's a bit multi-purpose. This one is mistletoe 22 and uh, it's created on copper. The rest is silver, the pin is steel and this stone these are very beautiful. I've used uh, them in several of the pieces. They call it Canadian Jade 
I suppose it comes from Canada. And it's also faceted and it has a beautiful color. I, I don't even know how to describe it. It's a mossy, intense, beautiful, warm green. And then we have here a tiny chrome diopside, which is very emerald green, and a spinal, uh, which is a very sparkly, opaque, almost mirrored type of stone. This one is the last one I worked on the setting for, uh, before I made the last few necklaces. Um, it's a bit different from the rest. Maybe you've noticed that they all have a bit of an arch um, design component to them. I call these portals into spring because they all, it's like going through a door and coming into spring. So they all have this kind of what I see as portals. And in my mind, this one also is, but it has a bit of a different feel to it. Uh, less of a flat surface with with an opening but it's also still a little door into spring there it's I guess a bit more of an arts and crafts type of feel to it and it's a lot airier I suppose and also the color scheme is a bit cooler and brighter more minty this comes from the stones, of course. The, I select them first and they, they entirely inform the colors in the enamel and the stones I picked for it. So these are Phrenites. Uh, it's a very beautiful stone that I love because often it has these inclusions that look like floating particles in there. They are like a rutilated uh, quartzy kind of. inclusions and yeah the enamel is created on silver which gives it more sparkle that's mistletoe 20 and the stones are several types so here we have some peridots those are peridots these are faceted um, tourmalines in a grayish green shade and then all of these are tiny, tiny little kyanites. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna show, but they gradate a little bit from darker to lighter. They go from more army type greens to really very light, uh, more minty shades. Some of them have orangey inclusions, which I, I think goes very well with this collection. I like to add a touch of red, orange, um, which is a bit of the complementary of, of green orange so yeah when I create these chains with stones with beads I create every link by hand wrapped around the stone securely a few times and here there is another um, tourmaline faceted I will use a lot of faceted stones for this collection because I think it gives this sparkly sun through leaves kind of effect. This one, um, I guess it has a bit of an art nouveau feel to it. This one is another brooch and also necklace, so you can wear it both ways. You can take the chain off and wear it as a brooch. Again, steel pin. That's mistletoe 30. And this stone is a, another tourmaline, the more olive shade tourmaline. And then on the necklace, which in fact you can also wear on its own if you want, you can join it. And just wear the necklace. And you can wear them both, I suppose. Uh, it has a few links that I made um, in the same style. I try to make everything that is beautiful on both sides, so it doesn't matter if it twists around. Um, and the stones are, these are some 
pear-shaped Vesuvianites, Vesuvianites, <laughs> little parrot dots. Let me try to zoom in a little bit, maybe you can see them better. Vesuvianite, parrot dots. These are also parrot dots, microfaceted, very beautiful parrot dots. Here we have another couple of olive green tourmalines, Canadian jade tourmalines. And here the rest of the chain is made with faceted Vesuvianites in different shades in groups of three. And again, all of these links and the hooks, everything is handmade from scratch. Here is another couple of earrings. These are hook earrings. I personally like that a lot. Uh, they have a lot of movement. I like how they look. I always add uh, a little rubber stopper here so it's not so easy to lose them. I've never lost one when using those stoppers. So these are pretty long kind of chandelier type earrings and the stones are tourmalines. I've used tourmalines in a lot of pieces this time around. They are olive green through the lights. They are more mossy, they're beautiful and they are natural crystals so they grow in this kind of um, column shapes and then they're just snapped and drilled so they are as nature made them oh and their name is mistletoe 26 it's engraved there also here is one that has a bit more of an emerald color scheme uh, which is also there on the enamel, of course. These are also enameled on silver, on fine silver. And again, you can remove the hooks. And wear it as a brooch. The pin is steel, like on the others. The rest is silver and here the stones are these uh, blocks are Vesuvianite and the green ones are green onyx. I actually ground them a little bit by hand to make them a bit flatter because I didn't like them when they were too round. <laughs> Originally they were faceted but round like these ones and here I found that in the design they needed to be a bit more um, like a rondel, so I ground them with diamond. And the chain has a few elaborate links. And here again the stones are green onyx, which is a cool, cooler, more emerald type of shade. And the uh, yellow green ones are Again, microfaceted Vesuvianites. So you can also again hook this chain to itself to wear like that. The chain is a curved chain or Cuban, which I love because it's really sparkly. And and you can also attach it. to the focal piece to wear it like a necklace and its name is mistletoe 18 and here is the last one which maybe is the most elaborate of them all
So this one is enameled on copper, but it's not entirely opaque. It has a, a few points of transparent light. Um, its name is Mistletoe 29. It's set in silver, of course. And here we also have a garnet, which is a stone I love, and especially these kind of elongated shapes. So this is a garnet, this is a micro-faceted Vesuvianite. And here we have a lot of uh, different things going on. I like to make mismatched <laughs> links sometimes. So here we have a tiny chrome diopside and a peridot, microfaceted peridot, a column Vesuvianite. This is a garnet, like an onion shape. And this one is a uh, franite, and this one is lined with gold, 24 karat to warm it up and give it this depth. Uh, actually, the garnets are also lined with gold for more sparkliness. Another garnet. This is a tourmaline and another Vesuvianite, Vesuvianite, Vesuvianite. You see a pattern, I really like Vesuvianite, it's my favorite green. And here we have Unakite, uh, which is green with orangey, pinkish stone. Um, my links, as I mentioned, I like to put some interest on the back too, just in case they turn around and just for your personal pleasure as a wearer. Um, and the rest of the chain is Vesuvianite. So this one has two uh, clasps. If you hook them together here, you have a really long necklace. You can also hook them to these rings here. And then you have more of a medium sized, regular sized necklace. And you can also hook them here to the start. And then you have a, a shorter, more choker sized. And that's the last one that I wanted to show you. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. See you, bye bye.